Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to Dr. Hong's classroom. Now the five to eleven years old children are officially eligible for the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. The CDC also recommend children who had prior infection and recovered should also receive the vaccine. The director mentioned that scientists still do not know how long natural immunity lasts or how robust it is. Now, if you have watched my video from last week, you know how I personally feel about COVID-19 vaccine in young children. But I still want to very objectively look at scientific literature and provide an unbiased assessment to everyone today, and look at this topic deeper. So, without further ado, let's find out more. First, let's look at what the CDC said so that we can get both sides of the argument. The CDC estimated about 40% of children aged 5 to 17 years in the U.S. have antibodies against the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus. The estimation was based on looking at de-identified residual serum collected by commercial laboratories for routine screening or acute clinical care. Despite as much as 40% of children in that age group may have a prior infection, the CDC still recommends vaccination because number 1. Infection-induced antibody response is lower or less consistent compared to mRNA vaccine-induced antibody response. Second, antibody titers generated after infection are lower in people with mild or no symptoms. And third, vaccination after infection significantly enhances protection and further reduces the risk of a reinfection. And the serological or antibody testing to assess prior infection is not recommended to make vaccination decision. Now we're going to examine each of these three CDC statements deeper with scientific literatures. The first statement, infection-induced antibody response is lower and less consistent compared with mRNA vaccine-induced antibody response. Is that so? This statement assumes the immune response against the coronavirus in children is similar to what happens in adults. But this article published in Nature News provided a summary explaining why children fight the coronavirus better than adults, at least before the Delta variant, was because of the innate immune response in children. The innate immune system in children appears to be revved up and ready to go to provide a crude but a faster reaction against the virus. At least one article published in the Nature Biotechnology in August suggests that children have reduced COVID infection rate and a much lower risk for developing severe disease. It's because children have a higher baseline level of pattern recognition receptors in the upper airway epithelial cells, macrophages, and dendritic cells, those are the immune cells of the innate immune system, that results in a stronger innate antiviral response upon SARS-CoV-2 infection than in adult. And this study supports the nature news we just looked at. We hear that children's COVID cases have been increasing in percentage among all cases in the U.S. This is true. The graph from the American Academy of Pediatrics and Children's Hospital Association tells us 22.4% of new cases were in children during the Delta surge in the summer. But if we look closely at the orange portion, the absolute number of new children cases are not significantly different than during the alpha variant surge last winter. And in terms of the clinical trial result, Pfizer told us the antibody response of the low-dose COVID vaccine in children is similar to what they find in older children and adults who received the full-dose vaccine. But Pfizer did not tell us if there are any differences in the induced antibody between children and adults. Here is another article that was published in Nature Communications. Although this study have a relatively small sample size, it told us several important messages. 
Number one, because adults and the elderly have more previous exposure to other coronavirus in the past when they encounter the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus, their adaptive immune system started to produce less specific antibodies against the new coronavirus and may contribute to a less effective antibody response in adults and elderly patients. And in contrast, children who have less experienced humoral or antibody immunity against other coronaviruses can produce antibodies that are more targeted against the SARS-CoV-2 virus S1 and receptor binding domain after they are infected. The more targeted antibodies may also contribute to less severe outcomes in children COVID cases. So even natural infection antibody levels may be lower than mRNA vaccine-induced antibody levels. We do not currently know if the level is the only parameter that determines the strength of immunity in children. If Pfizer had chose to prolong their study time and provide us more data, we could have some of these answers. However, they chose to submit their data early and CDC and FDA have accepted that. Let's look at CDC's second statement. Antibody titers generated after infection are lower in people with mild or no symptoms. Is that so? This preprint study looked at 57 children with an average age of 4 and 51 adults with an average age of 37 and concluded that mild, non-hospitalized COVID-19 children were less likely to develop antibodies than adults despite similar viral loads. This study supports the CDC statement. But at the same time, other studies tell us a different message. Here is an article published in a Lancet affiliated journal. They look at a sample size of 203 adults and concluded that regardless of the severity of the COVID infection, it can stimulate both robust antibody and T cells immunity of the majority of the studied people. And so what about children? In terms of children, this another article published in July 2021 looked at 69 children and adolescents with asymptomatic or mild symptomatic COVID infection. And they have several very interesting findings. First, they detected robust IgM, IgG, and IgA antibody responses to a broad array of SARS-CoV-2 antigens at the time of acute infection and two months and four months after the acute infection in all participants. Second, these antibody responses were associated with a virus neutralizing activity that was still detectable four months after acute infection in 94% of children. These responses were also comparable or superior to those observed in serum from 24 adults with mild symptomatic infection. Now, however, the biggest limitation of this study is its small sample size, but it provides a different message than the one from the CDC. This second article is a preprint article from a large group of UK scientists. They also studied the profile of antibody and cellular immunity in children aged 3 to 11 years old in comparison with adults. This study had a similar sample size as other studies I've talked about. There were 154 adults with an average age of 40 years old ranging from 20 to 71 and 91 children with an average age of 7 years old ranging from 3 to 11 years old. This article reported several very important findings. And number one, the antibody neutralization ability against the alpha, beta, and delta variants in recovered children were similar to those observed in recovered adults. And second, T cell responses against spike protein were more than twofold higher in children compared to adults. And third, even children with a non-detectable level of antibody had detectable T cells specific to the spike protein. And number four, very importantly, all children retained high antibody titers and cellular responses at six months after infection. And at the same time, we saw waning antibody levels in adults. And lastly, spike protein-specific responses in children remained broadly stable beyond 12 months. 
All of these findings told us that children's adaptive immune response to COVID infection is quite different than what we have seen in adults, and is more specific against the spike protein. Now, this article again suggested an alternative argument to CDC's message. Now, let's look at CDC's third point. Vaccination after infection significantly enhances protection and further reduces risk of reinfection. This message is somewhat true. I've previously gone over one study showing just one dose of the mRNA COVID vaccine can boost a very high level of antibody in recovered adults. At the same time, the studies that I've just gone over tell us children's innate and adaptive immune response against COVID infection is quite different than in adults. And at this point, there may not be enough evidence to generalize the third statement to recovered children. And according to CDC, that could be 40% of children between 5 and 17 years old. However, to be fair, I do want to point out the benefits of vaccinating all children. On the population and epidemiology level, vaccinating all children can number one reduce the total number of new cases. Number two, it may also reduce some level of transmission to other vulnerable populations, such as grandparents at home. But at the same time, we do not know how much of this reduction would be because it was not studied in the clinical trial. Number three, it could potentially end the pandemic very quickly because the virus would have less people to infect. And number four, children can interact more freely in person when everyone is vaccinated and may not need long quarantine after exposure. And these are all important public health benefits. But for parents, at the same time, we do not know exactly how the vaccine will impact the immunological responses in up to 40% of children who had prior immunity from infection. The bottom line is that emerging new science is rarely black and white, and we need to spend more time learning the topic when there is a conflict in evidence. And vaccination in children should be a decision made by the parents. Parents should think in terms of their children's health, the health status of their family members, the geographical location, and the risk of exposure. The risk in more populated areas is certainly higher than the risk in more rural areas. Well, if Pfizer had provided more long-term data to the FDA and CDC, parents could have an easier time making their decisions. I know this video is quite intense for people who are not as familiar with immunology concepts, and that's why I've made other one-minute short videos to cover these basic immunology concepts and ideas for my audience. So please feel free to check those out. And that is all for me this week. And my goal is to continue to provide unbiased scientific facts for my audience to make informed decisions for as long as my channel exists. And this channel need your help to reach more people. Please share and like this video. And thank you again for watching. And I hope to see you next week for an update of other emerging non-mRNA COVID vaccines that are quite promising. And meanwhile, please stay safe and healthy. Take care. Bye.